Welcome to part five of our web design in HTML series. And in this video, we're going to look at the font tag, how we can actually change the types of fonts that we use in our web content, as well as add in a couple of comments. And I'll explain what a comment is later on. So let's first look at the font tag. So the font tag is what we use if we want to improve the appearance of the text in our web page. Maybe a specific part we want to change whatever the details are of that particular font. So you've got some random text and you apply the font tag to the start of that text and you close the font tag where you want to stop applying the, the rules for this appearance. Now that's great, but it, this actually does nothing. This won't do anything to your, your, your text because we haven't given it attributes. In our previous lesson, we learned about how we can add attributes to different tags. Now the font tag has specific attributes which will allow us to change that appearance. The first one that we can look at is the color. I want to change the color of that text. Um, that's between these two font tags. So there is a color attribute. Take note though, it's American spelling, so there's no U in the word color. And I want to change the text color to yellow. So whatever the, the color of the text is currently, maybe we've set it for the entire page to a particular color. Um, whenever this font tag comes into effect, it will change whatever text is between these two tags to a different color. So let's say we're going to change it to yellow. Now if I do that, you'll see, oh, it's now yellow. That's fantastic. Now, if I want to add another property to or another different appearance to this text, I don't need a brand new font tag. I just can add more details to this particular um, font tag. So I'm going to add a new property or attribute, and I'm going to change now the size of the text. Now, the size of the text is very different to what you might be familiar with, like in a Word document. Um, maybe you see like use font size 58. No, 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 we don't have that here. Um, we've got different levels of sizes. So you can go from one until seven, where one being very small, seven being very big. So we can make it a little bit bigger by making a size five. And if we apply that, you'll see my text gets a lot bigger. That's fantastic. What else can we do? Well, maybe I don't like that particular font style and I want to change. I mean, there's a particular font that I want to use. Um, so for that property, I'm going to use the face property. So we're going to change the face and you need to use the exact correct spelling of the font that you want to use. And I would suggest you go into, for example, a Word document where you can change the font. Go look at the actual names of the font because sometimes the font isn't called Comic Sans. It's called Comic Sans MS. You need the full name, the proper name. So make sure that you type the name correctly. So if I apply that to the text, not only is it yellow, not only is it bigger, but now it's going to go to Comic Sans font. And so that's how we can apply the font tag to our text. Now, before we go and try this out, let's just have a look quickly at what a comment is. For example, if you want to try, try the comments, adding comments. Now, what, what are comments? They are ways of adding notes to your code um, or to your HTML document that you don't want to actually be displayed when someone views your web page. You just want to add some details, a little more comments. If you're working on a web page with other people, maybe you want to add little notes there so that other people can know what you've done and stuff like that. So this is a way that you can add notes. So whatever you do with these tags, it will not actually be displayed in the actual web browser. And so to do that, we use this. You use a open pointy bracket and you have exclamation mark dash dash and then at the end you will have a dash dash close the pointy brackets and whatever's between those two will then be invisible on the web browser but you can still read it in the html code so we're going to do that a little bit as well to our web pages so here we've got our web page i've actually added another paragraph which we can't see so i need to save it and refresh it. So there's my other paragraph. Now I actually want this paragraph to look a little bit different. I actually want to make it look a little like, let's change the font of that. So I'm going to, even though I've got a paragraph tag, I'm going to over here, I'm going to say, hey, let's apply a font tag. And like we've learned before, when we want to close the font, if I want to do all of this inside this paragraph, um, I must first close the font tag before closing the paragraph tag, because the font tag was the last one that I opened, so it must be the first one that we close. So I've added a font tag and I save it, and you'll notice it does nothing. Okay, we have to add attributes, so let's say, so our text is already yellow, I'm going to actually change, I want to change the color of this text, why is it not yellow? Oh, why is it not uh, red? It needs to be, oh, we need to take that U out, remember, no U's, so we want to make the text white. So let's do that, let's make the text white, I'm going to save it, I'm going to refresh it, there we go. You can see it's slightly different to there. It's, it's now a lighter shade of white. Okay. And I also want to make it a little bit bigger. So what do I do? I'm like, hey, let's go make the size of this text. Let's go make it uh, f uh, four. So let's see what that looks like. 
So refresh it. Oh, it's slightly bigger. There we go. If I made it a seven, let's see what a seven looks like. Seven's the biggest. Seven. Oh, it's so massive. There we go. I don't want it that big. And if I wanted to make it a one, like, oh, let's see. No, that, oh, that's a bit too, oh, I can't even read that. That's so small. Let's make it, I like the four. Let's go back to the four. Boom. There we go. So let's refresh. And there we go. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay. So now I also want to change what type of font it is. I'm going to use the face property. And I'm going to give it a particular font style. Okay, which font style is, should I use? I don't know. Well, I'm going to go into my Word document. So I've got a Word document here. And there we've got all our lovely little fonts over here that we can look at. So we can see a whole list of them. So we can see which one we actually want to use. So maybe I want to use, uh, let's find one. Copper black. Let's go. Copper black. So let's look at the spelling. It's copper space black. There's nothing afterwards. I'm going to use copper black. Let's see if that works. So... Is it Cooper Black or Copper Black? Cooper Black. Did I spell it correctly? How was it? Was it Cooper Black? It's still long. Why did I say Copper Black then? No, it's, it's Cooper Black, sorry. Why did I just say Copper? Cooper Black, there we go. Save it. Let's see. There we go. So there we've changed the font. So there we go. So you can change the color and the size and the face. So what happens if you want to write a little comment? Hey, uh, we might want to check this, please, for later. We want to add a list. So I'm going to make a little comment here. So I want to add a list of videos. Um, but I don't want it to say uh, add a add a list of videos here. This is just a comment for me. I don't, just to remind me that I must do that later. Now, if I save this and go, uh, I, I don't want it in my text. I don't want it there. I want to just leave it there. So that's a little comment. So I'm going to put a pointy bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash. You see how the text goes green. And then we put a little dash, dash. Close the pointy brackets. That's what a comment looks like. It goes nice and green. And if it's green and I save it, you'll notice that even though it's on my HTML code, it doesn't appear on the web page. So that way you can write little comments in your code. A lot of times in exams, you have to write your name in a comment, but that's how you can add a little comment. Okay. Now, before we go into more details about HTML, some of you are looking at these colors and go, these colors are great, but I actually want more specific colors. So although you don't need to really know this for cats and that, this is some fun little bits where we can actually, let's go get specific colors that we want for our web page, And we can see how we can create our specific colors. So we're taking a little detour about colors. So let's just learn about them. I've kept the American spelling in my, in my document so we can keep it. So let's first understand how colors are stored. Um, so when you using a color, you can use the color name, but you can also use what's called the RGB code. Now the RGB code, what does it mean? Well, you started off with a hash symbol and then you need to give it three little codes that represent the R, the G and the B. Now what is the RGB? Well, the first is the red code for how much red you want in that particular color and then you want the green and then you want the blue now if you don't if you know anything about science and light all color is made up of those three colors so you can if you have full red full green and full blue you actually get the color white and if i have full red and i take away all the green and all the blue then obviously i've only got red left but if I, let's say I take all the red and all the green, then it gives me like a yellow type color. So using these in different combinations, you can get every single color. And it uses a two digit hex code. Hex meaning it uses all the codes from naught up until nine and A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, if you're not too sure about it, you don't need to. There are lots of ways of finding out what the right codes are. But you can use a RGB code to get a particular color. So if you, for example, want to change the color of the font, you could, instead of saying that it's blue, you could say equals to hash F0C808. And now that code, I think, is for this particular yellow that you can see in the block if you want to use that. But how do I get the color that I want? Well, let's go try that out quickly. So if you want to get a particular code, let's just type some text over here. And I want to get a particular color. What you can do is you can select any text and you can come here to change the font of a particular text and you can go to more colors. Okay, so yeah, we got this little pile where we can select different colors. I really like that particular color. Now I can go here to custom and there you can see the hex code. That is the hex code for that particular color. In fact, what's nice about this is you can actually move this around to anywhere you want and see what the color looks like. I want that particular green and you want to make it darker and you'll get exactly the code that you wanted. Now I want to go back to that one that I wanted. I think it was that one. So if I will. Or something like that. So if I want that particular color, then I can just select that one. I can copy it and then I can go to my web page boom, 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 and change the background. I don't want that blue. I want this hex code. And then you can save it and then let's open up our web page. 
and it's refreshed and there you can see the colors change a little bit at the back now other tips you can use when you're trying to find colors you can actually go online i went online and typed in rgb calculator and there are lots of little calculators that you can use very similar to what we just did in word um, but i like to find these color code charts and this is one that i found so you can actually play around with codes over here and you can get a particular color and it'll give you the hexadecimal code and um, there's some other ones over here that you can try out and go hey i want there there we go or oh, what's nice is they've actually given you further down they've actually given you a long list of the different types of colors and all their names and stuff like that so maybe you want to use medium blue or dark blue and stuff like that or sky blue i think if you use these names i don't know if they'll work let's try steel blue let's try steel blue over there steel blue room make it one word i don't know if it's going to work but let's try it there we go so it does work steel blue does work so you can use those names or you can use the rgb color for steel blue which is where is it there it is you could use the rgb color for it um another thing what i like to do is if i go into google images and you search for maybe two colors in the word color theme with rgb you'll get a whole bunch of color combinations which work well together um so i typed blue yellow for mr long and you can go select that particular palette and if I go view that image, you will go see those are a nice combination of colors. And so maybe we want to use that hex code and that one. So maybe these are a nice combination of colors for our web page. So that's how you can use RGB colors. So I want to change this yes, 005581. So let's change this. So remember, it's always hash. It's uh, 005581. And so let's save and let's go look at our web page now. Boom. So there we go. That's the blue that I want for my background. And you can go edit it a bit like that. Links to the other videos in the series are in the video description below. As well as at our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Tell us what videos you want us to record. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.